Did you know that the trim for your home does not have to be made out of wood? In fact, it can be made out of polyurethane foam. And you might be surprised to see just how strong this foam can be. I'm with Arlen Yoder. Arlen, what is the first step in making a great looking piece of trim like this? Steve, the first thing we do is uh, put together a working drawing that spells out the design, the dimensions, and the profiles of the finished part. Looks pretty detailed. It's very detailed. We come up with these designs uh, from a variety of places. Uh, we'll uh, replicate designs that have been used for hundreds of years uh, on houses and as well as uh, custom parts. Now this is actually a, a wood pattern that your craftsmen are making. I'm really amazed at the detail that you go through to actually make the pattern for the molds. I mean, this is pretty phenomenal. What a profile. It's curved. It's made out of poplar, right? Yes. It's a very intricate uh, design, this piece we're looking at. It takes a lot of time and energy and some real uh, skilled woodworking uh, to, to build these patterns. How long does it take to make one of these? Well, a pattern like this could take up to two weeks of somebody's time to actually make. Well, that could cost a couple thousand dollars. It can be very expensive, and that's one of the things that's so great about polyurethane is that we can replicate time and time again the detail and the intricacy of a, of a wooden piece like this and do it out of polyurethane and do it very economically. Well, this is what the uh, uh, finished product looks like in a smaller version. It's, it's a very durable product. It's uh, dense. It's, it's a rigid polyurethane, and uh, it, it's impervious to moisture. It doesn't rot. Insects don't like it, and it has a lot of those advantages that wood uh, doesn't have. Now, what happens next? The next thing we do, once we get a, a finished pattern, we'll pour a mold and uh, prepare that mold. It'll be ready for production to where we can replicate these products time and time again. I'd love for you to show me how that works. OK. Steve, this is our pattern with a rubber mold. <laughs> it's pretty heavy. It is heavy. It's made out of silicone rubber. Well, it does a good job of picking up the intricacies of uh, this pattern. It does. The silicone picks up all the details off of the pattern. This is our original wood pattern with a finished coat of paint over it to make it perfectly smooth, which we do before we actually pour the rubber. Now you can see back here, we typically inject the rubber mold, but here we'll pour it so everyone can see it. Pretty thick, gooey stuff. It's thick, but it does uh, cover and get fit into all the details of the pattern. How long and does that take to dry? It takes about 24 hours for it to cure. What's the next step? Well, the next thing we do is build a box to support this rubber mold and then we put it in the production process. Well, Arlen, this mold was green, now it's white, why? Our first step in the production process is to put a layer of paint in the mold. That serves two purposes. One, it acts as a release agent to when we actually take the part out of the mold. And number two, it becomes integral to the part. It acts as a barrier coat and a primer. The next step is to actually pour the urethane into the mold. Now our urethane's made up of two components, an isocyanate, which is a petroleum base, and a resin, which is more of a natural base. Those two things are blended together right before they go into the mold, and there's a chemical reaction that happens, and it expands. Because of that, we need to do two things right away. One, we need to put a uh, release paper over the top of the mold that allows the air to escape from the mold, and we put a lid on it and put it in a press to contain the foam. Because it's expanding, we need to be able to contain it. It would just screw out all over the mold. It would go everywhere if we didn't contain it under pressure. And you need to maintain a certain density so it works and acts like wood. That's right. All our parts are, are molded to a specific density. So Steve, here's a finished part. So this is actually the back side, and I can see the foam. I have a sample of this stuff here. You know what? I am amazed at how tough this stuff is. This is really tough stuff. It's a tough product, Steve, and, and you can see the expansion that happens. We weren't able to see that because it was in the press. We put a few inches of foam in the bottom of this cup and it expanded to what you see there. You can work this product just like wood with a filler putty, uh, wood putty, and those types of things, and you can work it with woodworking tools. Standard tools standard tools, saws, drills, and uh, you can nail and screw it just like wood. At a fraction of the cost of what it would cost you had to make this out of wood. Exactly. It's a great uh, maintenance-free product for your home. Whether you're using urethane molding on the inside or outside of your home, it can give your home a great look. For example, here we have a urethane column on each side of the door, a mantle across the top of the door, a raised panel under the window surrounded by two columns, and a keystone mantle across the top. All these features can enhance the value and curb appeal to your new house.